Hi friends, welcome back to Banishers. We are here... Oh, got too close. <laughs> Cutscene. He seems very troubled. You've saved our sorry asses, sir. Of that, there's no doubt. You've earned us a rare bit of rest. And that comes most welcome. You're right, soldier. You look drop dead weary. The dead don't sleep, do they? And me being asleep won't stop them coming. Can no one take your shift? We're short-handed as it is. Besides, I can rest and keep watch at the same time. Old soldier trick. <laughs> oh, bullshit I sight. What's going on? Oh, what do you care? I have my problems and you have yours, so let me handle myself. I ain't important, and I don't deserve no help. Waste of time helping me anyway. You heard the man. He wants no help. I see no reason to force it on him. For now, at least. How are folk doing? Fighting fit? They're farmers, most of them. Shopkeepers, house servants, hunters. We've one old soldier, but he's sick. The Mustan stand dead on their feet. Fighting fit, my arse. But we hold against the hordes of the dead. And now, leastways, the fight's not fair, does it? They? <laughs> Maybe they deserve it? Life's unfair. Arm it up. Right, I used to think that too. Mind you, I'm not sure there's enough armor left. Had any good scuttle lately? I'd spill it if I have it, but be quick. I'm busy. We've known an officer or three, you and me. So, tell me about the captain. In nigh on 20 years' service, I've not met a commander more efficient. Nor one so relentless. Ever a pain in the ass, I. But a good one. For that was then and this is now. He's not the man he was. Still a pain in the ass, mind. I like how we're getting different opinions about these folks from different people. Some people like them, some people don't. Like the New Smiths. They each have their fans. What think you now of Helen Priest? Wow, she's like her husband. Only yet better. Command is in her blood. She reminds me of my old mum. <laughs> the Queen of Topsfield Common, we used to call her. Born to give orders, she was. And you dare not disobey. What is the square of light I keep seeing on his beard? On the lower left. It's like this little orange square. Did you know Sebastian Priest? I surely did. Good man. Hell of a soldier. Had kingly ideals, but did not strut like a crow in the gutter. Hero is an ill-used tag. Oft misassigned. But Lieutenant Priest was a hero. And a proper one at that. Hmm. Good to hear. Peaceful watch to you. Come on, you bastards. Come I'll play it. with you. Can dude. slow it down. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder why I couldn't. Uh... Yeah, it's gone now. The. <laughs> The flag, the banner, that indicates that that is a haunting. Maybe I've got to do the flame in the dark I'd first. Like to help him. Oh, here we go. Old soldier and all. All right. Let's start with his billet. All right. So their barracks is the building next to us. Right. Andrew's things. Where are you? Not 
not up there. Uh, I think we've already read this. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's nice stuff. Not here. Letter from Cotton Peabody's sister. My dearest Cotton, it's been a long time and I know you asked me not to write you anymore, but you broke my heart the day you asked me to stop contacting you. Didn't we read this already? This sounds very familiar. I know there's been several people who have <laughs> had fallings out with, with loved ones and have been told to stop contacting them. All right, I'll try one last time. Sorry to learn about your health and I hope you'll recover soon. Errol and I have a little girl. I know you never accepted my love for him, but we are happily married. We named our child Mary, like the beloved, our beloved grandmother. We live in a beautiful little house. We have a cow and seven chickens. Yeah, we've read all this already. I'll try to send you some money. Banish a rule 92. By a man's things shall you know him. I think you've made that one up. Medal of, ooh, in honor of bravery of Andrew White, King Philip's War, 1678. God bless the king. Mm, an award given to a brave soldier. I believe we found Andrew's things. All right, here's another letter. To Andrew White, Fort Jericho. My love, I'm sending you this letter so that you will not worry about our situation. My parents welcomed us with open arms. My mother was so happy to see her grandchildren that she, that she prepared a real feast. My father grumbled a bit, as he always does. Can't wait to get back to calm, but he is still very happy to have some help in the fields. He will never admit it, but he is proud of our two strong sons. Besides, Isaac and Abraham are quite happy to be back in Providence. They say that the rules are less harsh there, and, can only, and I can only agree with them. I can't wait to come back to your side, my darling. I'm afraid of what might happen to you. I think it's high time we left New Eden for good. This town is cursed, as I've always told you. I hope you are well, and that your nightmares are not haunting you too much. Don't forget what the nurse gave you. Despite the distance, I continue to sing every night, hoping my songs reach you, and assure you as reassure you as usual. Love you with all of my heart, your wife, Karina White. Andrew White's promotion letter, 16th of July, 1677, to Private Andrew White of Mal Massachusetts Militia under the orders of Lieutenant Pennington. So the Pennington's been promoted since as well. White, bearing in mind your recent endeavor on the battlefield, on the advice of your lieutenant, you are promoted to uh, a role commensurate with your skills. Henceforth, you shall be a recruiting sergeant responsible for ensuring the replenishment of our forces with well-trained men. Initially to camp at Haverhill. Colonel Adderd. Addendum. As we discussed, your health deteriorates and the incident has not helped. You're a good man, White. Pennington. The incident. This is our best lead yet. I wonder if there's an infirmary. After that, we might look for his train band record. Okay, we still see that there is something here, but we can't break through. As we've attempted before. Uh, the infirmary. The infirmary. How often, Abigail, must we have this fight? How often must we argue? We shall argue until you hear me. I hear you. Now, Mr. Peabody, I shall drain the first boil. Ready? Uh, same sudden question every sudden time. No, I'm not done well ready. <laughs> Excellent. Then we'll begin. Be careful, goddammit! Ow. Be careful! Ah! I know. Calm down, man. Of course it's gonna hurt. Shh. 
Ooh. Boy, all kinds of stuff. Uh, hi, can we can we chat real quick? My apologies. I did not wish to hush you. I just prefer to focus on one patient at a time. Welcome to the infirmary. I'm Nurse Wings. Anne, if it sets you at ease. I'm a banisher. Name's McCraith. You may call me Red. Red. A pleasure to see a friendly face. Or any face at all. What can I do for you? So, how'd you end up here? What brought you to nursing? That, sir, it's a personal question. <laughs> I'm a personable man. <laughs> That's not the same thing. I was sick as a child. Very sick. Afterwards, I swore I'd serve others when they were sick. And here I am. What about you? Hmm. Now, let's go with this. Red's a romantic man. I fell in love with a banisher. One of the best. Spent the happiest years of my life with her. And where are they now? Antea right died in the meeting side. house in New Eden Town. Ah, that was you. I should have known. I'm so very sorry for your loss, Red. So very sorry. Times being as they are, how come you only have the one patient? Mr. Peabody's illness is unsightly. Fort Jericho has a history of contagion. Folk worry. What does he have? Not my place to say. You'll have to ask him yourself. Little, uh, little doctor-patient confidentiality? I appreciate that. All right. I'll not press you. Do you not fear infection? If I did, I would not show it. What's the word around here? No, I don't see folk much. I stay here, keep to myself. No visitors? No other patients? Helen Prees comes when she can. Captain Pennington would sometimes visit Mr. Peabody, but I haven't seen him in a while now. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He fought King Philip and the Wampanoag. Led his company well, I'm told. It's not for me to like or dislike him, unpleasant though he may be. Tell me about Helen Priest. The bold lieutenant's widow. He's dead some years now, and she's not remarried. She's as much a soldier as her husband was. A fighter. Commanding, too. Even dead, you can see his influence in her bearing. I think I know how that feels. <laughs> wow, so Helen Priest, most people seem to have a very high uh, opinion of her. So maybe maybe she would be a, a good replacement. Maybe Captain Pennington needs some time off. What about you? How do you feel? Oh, I'm alive and well. I'll not complain. I can be strong for those less fortunate. You're a good soul, Nurse Wings. I do my best, Mr. McCraith. I'm sure you do yours. Farewell, Nurse Wings. Farewell, and good health, sir. Okay, well, he's not haunted, he's just sick. Uh, let's see about these items here. Andrew White's Medical Report, Part 2. Notes about the patient Andrew White, September 1694. The patient's nightmares have increased in intensity. He's very anxious and skips meals. December 1694. The departure of the children from New Eden, and thus of Private White's family, has caused him terrible insomnia. Okay, so there was... a question of... did the kids survive when they were sent away from New Eden before Red and Antea showed up. I think maybe this suggests that they did, or at least some of them did, if Private White's wife, or Sergeant White now, is right, was writing to him and saying that they've made it to her parents' house. 
Uh, January 1695. The patient gradually regains sleep. Mixture of certain herbs seems to help a little with sleep. February 1695. Fewer nightmares. The patient is, however, more anxious. He does not want to talk about the man he sees in his dreams. March 1695. Private White spends some nights in the infirmary. He starts to be affected by deme Ooh, dementia. However, this does not last more than half an hour? May 1695. A couple months have gone by now. The patient has calmed down, but still lacks sleep. However, he speaks of shadows and figures appearing sometimes at night, when he is not sleeping. June 1695. The anxious deliriums are much more recurrent. He sleeps very little. Sometimes something seems to have awakened old painful memories. Private White does not dare to talk about it, but he seems to recognize the figure that stalks him in nightmares. Fourteen years is a long time to live haunted. White must have a will of iron. Kept it to himself. It must have been hellish. Any idea who this ghost might be? You may know a soldier by his trail of dead. Could be anyone. Okay, here's part one. 12th of March, 1689. Private White has been having recurrent nightmares for many years, since 1682, he says, even when he's had trouble sleeping since 1678. And at the end of the war, his treatment and evolution of his condition will be annually recorded here. The year 1689. The treatment with the herbal infusions has made it easier for the patient to sleep during the year. The nightmares became less frequent. One anxious delirium was reported after the anniversary of Andrew's comeback from the war. 1690, patient's case improved slowly. Depending on the month, his doses of herbs are doubled. No anxious deliriums. 1691, Private White is calmer and rested. However, two heavy anxiety episodes have recurred. Occurred. The patient finds it difficult to talk about his dreams, but admits to seeing blurred figure at times. 1692, the herbs no longer seem to be effective. I'm looking for a new treatment. According to the patient, his nightmares are more frequent and frightening. No other heavy crisis to report. 1693, the new treatment is working. Nightmares are scarcer, but more intense. Depending on the month, the doses must be doubled. No anxious deliriums. 1694, the treatment has lost its effect. Nightmares are more recurrent and intense. The patient is suffering from chronic fatigue. Six episodes this year. The patient does not dare to talk about his nightmares. Anne Wing's medical record number four. Raspberry bushes heals dysentery, possibly also causes it. <laughs> oh, the classic case of the cure. Being, causing more harm. Uh... W leaves dried? W? What's W? I don't know. One week or more, dry tea. Try tea with other plants. Oil, two drops, sharp flavor. Pale yellow liquid, not pale brown. Maybe try with different... Oh, wintergreen. Different types of wintergreen. Are those your records? Yes. Perhaps someday they may help someone. Do you have the supplies you need? I can treat a cough, perhaps cool a fever. Mr. Peabody needs more than calamine. But what he needs is not available and we must accept it. Well, what does he need? Maybe we can find it. Alright, medical record number two, 23rd of April 1689. Echinacea did well on old Miller's toothache. 6th of June. Sim... Simic... Wow, don't know. Or Myrtle for women's pain. I should not forget this one. 13th of September. Rumor of epidemic in the mines and the mountains. I am forbidden to go. I am vexed. 29th of October. I learned today that oil of wintergreen may ease the king's evil. I pray I shall never need it. All right, record number one, 8th of May, 1692. First amputation, very young, poor boy. 
15th of June, 1692, Mind Law knows many herbal remedies and will teach me. 12th of June, 1692, I healed a soldier of a five-day fever. Eupatorium perfol perfoliatum? Perfoliatum. 16th of August, 15th of August, 1692, Arnica root for back pain. Some response. That's one, two, and four. Where, where's, uh, where's record number three? Huh? What are you hiding? What are you hiding there, Anne? What did you learn in record number three that you're not sharing with anybody? Uh, back door is locked. All right, let's talk to Senor here. Oh, that are you. Ooh, that Queen looks Mary Stuart. Nasty. Well, I've met Mary the second, and she's a little prettier than I. I'm Red McCreath. I'm a banisher. <sighs> the banisher come to gloat at sick old cotton bee body. Well, piss off. There's a sudden stink of death in here, Scotsman, and it ain't from me. Wow. Where did you fight, soldier? None of your business, Scotsman. This comrade is mine. No one wants to talk to you. Because <laughs> you're a putz. You're not a soldier. You're a brawler and a rebel. And if you fought at all, I'll wager you lost. I'm a proper soldier, me. Self-made, too. Left the family farm and signed up to fight them Indians. I learned the hard way in the blood and the snow. Fought under the captain himself, I did. And followed him here and joined the train band. When did you get sick? What's it to you? I'm not so sick as I can't give some nosy Scotsman what for. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm sick, I get surly too. <laughs> He's very forgiving of the way this guy's talking to him. What's the word around here? No one tattles to me stuck in here. Captain came by once, worried for Andrew White. Seems the old boy screams in his sleep. There's a lot of it about. White's a gate guard, right? What's his story? He sees ghosts in his sleep. He's dreaming. Real ghosts come when you're awake. Tell me about the captain. Speak freely, I'll not get back to him. Let you get back to him. The captain is the best of us, and I'm proud to serve him. Proud, too, to give him my guidance when he'd call. Not that he calls no more. Suppose he has too much on his plate. Time's precious for the likes of the captain, eh? I'm guessing he's not gonna like Helen Priest. Tell me about Helen Priest. I promise it won't get back to her. Lieutenant's wife. Stood second to the captain herself. Now she's in command. Quiet the rise, no? How's life about the fort? What do you want to hear? It's cold. We're hungry. Welcome to paradise. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. <laughs> Boy, he's a... He's a pleasant sort. Oh, what do we have here? These look nasty. Poor man. Never a good sign. All right, I think that's all we're gonna find here. Uh, we need to go into the armory now, which... Pretty empty armory. Looks like someone's been living in here. Yes, we've read that already. That's the... Williams was... the soldier who was with Helen Priest. Yep. Saw that one already. And here's another Bible, I, I think. Yep. Man, I gotta find out why... It seems like they maybe are a collectible, but I can't collect them yet. So maybe there's... 
Am I going to meet somebody who... Who wants me to collect Bibles or something? Here's another one. Well, at least I know where to go to find them. <laughs> uh, this... I can't imagine... Storeroom. He's living here. Locked. Hmm. Ooh, it looks like maybe there's something on the other side of it. Can't get through. Okay, so let's try going around. Maybe we can get in underneath. Nope. Okay. I know we can get in the root, the top here, so we'll try that. Maybe that's where we're supposed to go. Okay, we've done all of this, I think. Miss Flora Abbott has joined the company to fight against the monsters. I take every hand I can get, the steadier the better. Miss Abbott, having demonstrated that her hand is steadier than any man's, by shooting a thimble on a post from a full 200 paces, is hereby contracted to the train band. Those who would complain, Theodore Shepard, principal among them, can go to hell. <laughs> uh... Captain Pennington's report about Theodore Shepard. New Eden, 23rd day of May, 1691. Theodore Shepard is contracted to the train band. Veteran of King Philip's War, he's the finest shot I've ever seen. Less admirable is his arrogance, but I suspect the two come hand in glove. All right, Captain Pennington's report about Anne Wings. A note to them as reads it. Nurse Anne Wings is as fine a nurse as one could want. Born to the trade, she is invaluable. I do not know how the sick and injured would fare without her. Neither do I know how she would fare without the sick and injured. Oh, that's interesting. All right, Captain Pennington's report about Andrew White, 8th of June, 1677. Last morning, I took 12 men and rode out from Portsmouth in search of an attachment from the Plymouth Militia, late arriving after a three days mission of patrol. Half a day's ride north, we came across their remains. Only one survivor. As he recounted the details of the Indian ambush their attachment faced, I was impressed by the fortitude of this young private. Andrew White is a promising and devilishly robust soldier and shall join the Mil Massachusetts Militia under my command. He shall be accordingly rewarded for his bravery. Lieutenant Saul Pennington. A metal trinket to mark a life of sacrifice. Oh, I bet he'd rather have his sleep bag. At least he made it home. Aye. Then he didn't. I'll talk to Andrew. Might perk him up a bit. Captain Pennington's report about Helen Priest. In case of trouble and or strife, may this report correct any error in the record. Mrs. Helen Priest is a woman of the highest value. Combative and capable, the fort does well with her present. It would do better without. Uh-oh. <laughs> For all her capacities, she lacks the most basic. Loyalty. Uh-oh. Well, there's the source of that trouble. And we... Popped down here already. There we go. So now let's go talk to Andrew White and see. Uh oh. We see a ghost. Should have had your breakfast, friend. Anyway, greetings. Hello there. I'm Antea Duarte. This here is Red McWraith. We're banishers. Now, who are you and what do you want? <laughs> are you the ghost haunting Andrew White? <laughs> hmm. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> Q. 
can't speak. Who are you? This isn't going to be easy, is it? Mute ghosts take forever. This is pointless. We're hunting in the dark with no light and no spur. First, you have to find out what's keeping him from speaking. Andrew won't be much help. But if our friend here can't tell us what he wants, maybe he can show us. <sighs> Do you want us to follow you? I think he wants us to follow him. He left stains. Clever. I'll keep an eye out so we don't lose them. Here, we can go on. I'm reminded of one of my first cases. The ghost was mute because the person haunted refused to talk. So this one is mute because of Andrew? I don't know. Maybe. if this guy was a soldier who m maybe Andrew could have helped him but he hid instead or something maybe he had the chance to save the man and didn't our new friend is waiting for us Over here. The, the ghost the haunting trench. Andrew seems weak. Drawing out the torture the better to enjoy it? Or holding itself back, afraid to feed too much? If mine had been so kind, maybe to slept night. I'm jealous. Don't be. These ones are the worst. Years withering. Decades even. It's a awful way to go. See, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to punch him. Careful. They mean business now. Ask for help if you need it. Oh! Trying to dodge and it couldn't. Oops. Oh! Buddy! Dog cunt it! Can't lose to this guy. He's all by himself. Ah! Rats. Our friend the ghost could have shown us a safer route. Or he's just playing with us. <laughs> Alright, which way did he go? There we go. There's his trail. He's leading us somewhere.
spectral writing on the wall. See for yourself. Joshua Gouge, gone too soon. Oh. Forgive yourself, mate. Oh gosh, it's all over the place. Okay, I never blamed you, my Our friend. Our ghost does not seek revenge. That makes things easier. You must abide. Joshua Gouge, gone too soon. What's it going to say? Joshua Gouge outstayed his welcome. <laughs> he wants us to follow him. But I'm not, I'm not done reading the, the, the writings here. Forgive yourself, mate. You must not give up. Be strong for me. You must live. Courage, my friend. Okay. <gasps> the key to Bly Manor stolen effects. That's... That was... That's this. I'm super close to that. Alright, so before we leave this area, we need to make sure that we... Do that. This way. <sighs> wow, that was a whiff. See him. Crud. Joshua looks kindly on Andrew. What were they to each other? Brothers in arms, man. You never feel as close to a mate as when you fight by his side. You fight for the man beside you, not for money, not for a king, for your mate. You have friends from the war. First I've heard of them. They lost contact. Maybe when this is over, I'll look them up. The stain is fading. Most young men are taught to dream of war. And when they get there, they... They dream of home. And they're not busy fighting and dying, that is. Uh, seem to have gone the wrong way. This ivy is strong. Really strong. You don't say. Hmm. Alright, well, the chest is over here, so... Let's go get it. Oh wait, no it's not. Crap, I'm in the wrong place again. Ugh. Oh wow, I'm totally in the wrong place. Ah. Uh. Old man Dan getting lost again.
Okay. I'm losing the trail. Hold on. Chest is close. I don't want to get it. Yes. All right. Earthbound. Wristband. A little less punch damage. Bigger strength, though. Punch attack area of effect is increased by 100%. Uh, vitality goes down. Persistence up. Hmm. Alright. We'll give it a try. What do we need to upgrade it? Oh. We have enough to upgrade. Void splinters. Okay, we're going to have to be... Dipping into those voids a lot more often. Wait. What? says it's behind me. Yeah, we came up here. Up the wall. Wait. The stain is fading. Does that mean I'm going the wrong way? Is that her way of telling me that you're going the wrong way? Oh, there it is. Good grief. Our new friend is waiting for us. Sorry, ghosty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. They never learn, do they? Oh, nuts. Oops, uh oh. Uh, Dodge. One of those guys. All right, our little ghosty friend wants us to come this way. done this once. Oh, we go through it. Okay. Past it. Isn't there a more direct route he could have taken us? Where'd you go? There you are. Aha! Uh -huh. I it thought this was something. Ghost voice. Shite! Two arms! Two arms! They waylay us! The right flank! Hold them off! Josh! Behind you! Good dumb bustery code! Help me! Andrew's 
pistol. Old pistol belonged to Andrew. Ty is doused with the essence of its go. Okay, that's closure. We know all that. Wait a minute. Can we? Is this something we can actually use? Oh no, it's just. Okay. okay. Now can you speak? Oh wait, hold on. Nice to meet you again, Joshua. You want us to help Andrew White give up his guilt and get on with his life. Am I right? <sighs> nope. We know you died fighting by his side. Is that why he feels guilty? Is this why you can't speak? <sighs> you are capable of nodding, correct? I've been there. I'll do everything I can to help. <laughs> if help we can. Only these two could talk to each other. Andrew needs to start talking. As long as he swallows his guilt, nothing will change. <sighs> There's a wall between these two, and we must knock it down. I may be able to do that. Andrew failed to save his friend and blames himself for it. He shouldn't. Easier said than done. Shame is a queer bird. And it's shite doesn't it wash off. None of this explains what binds the ghost here. Be a resource there I could grab. But nope, it's just a good old fashioned Dan going the wrong way. As per usual. Frozen again. Stop doing that game. Making me nervous. All right, Andrew. Talk. What happened? Good to see you living, sir. Keep it short, I'm on duty. <laughs> I don't usually bring it up, but I was a soldier too. Thought as much. Where'd you fight? Well, first I fought my way across half the Highlands. Later I'd fight wherever my paymaster sent me. Bavaria, Bohemia, Austria. What's your war story then? We all have one. Wow, I wiped out a village or I killed a friend. Holy crap. I took my men into a village. Let them have the drink. You can imagine the rest. I didn't partake, but I didn't stop them neither. Tis ours to keep God in your heart while you walk through hell. But you know what never leaves? The smell. That sickening coppery vapor rising as a man's life pulls beneath them. For all those brave young boys we send off in search of glory, that stink is their rude awakening. Easier to die with than live with, perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps not. <clears throat> but come. Blood soaks away. Let's not dwell upon the past and men long gone. You're not like this, but we must speak of Joshua. Leave it be. In the past, where it belongs. Your past is very much present. Your friend Joshua has a message for you. He wants to take revenge. I know it. You're not wrong. He wants to give you freedom. 
He never blamed you. You blamed yourself. Why would he not seek revenge? He's due it. He doesn't see it that way. I... I shot him. I was trying to save him and I shot him. Hold on. How did this happen? We were skirmishing in the forest. Two Indian fellas bore down on Joshua. Dropped one, but the other had him cold. I was twenty yards away. I raised my musket, pulled the trigger. Bullet went straight through his skull. Did you admit it later? I mean, no one would have thought the worst of you. A battle like that, well, it's what happens. Shite happens to shite soldiers. I said nothing. I wanted it over. I want it over. I don't want to live. I want to die. Please. Please. Put me out of my misery. I am duty-bound to protect the living from the dead. Sometimes, too, from themselves. You can't see it now, but you can learn to live with this. Talk about it. Accept it. You'll come to the point where it stops defining your life and you can set about living in the time you have left. I wonder if Red has had that no. experience, too. You survived. Oh, he's talking. Now you must live. Joshua? Is that you? It cannot be. I, it's half his nose is I missing. Saw Holy dead. crap. It is, old friend. I've tried for the longest time to speak to you, but your guilt took my voice. You must live in peace. I have not the right. I shot you. I was sure my aim was good, but it was not. I shot you. It was an accident, Andrew. You tried to save me. You failed. <laughs> but you may make amends. <laughs> Until you give yourself peace, I cannot have mine. Save me, Andrew. Save me. Give yourself peace and save me. Joshua, you have spoken. Andrew, you've heard. It's time to end the story. Well, this one, is, there's no, no question. Just... Joshua deserves his ascendance. Andrew White. It was an accident. Joshua Friendly fire on the Grouch. battlefield. You've lingered in silence for too long. You can go. I can. Thank you, Banishers. Thank you, Andrew. Time to say goodbye, boys. I'm sorry, my friend. I've carried the weight of your death as far as I can. The debt, if any, is paid. Live your life. Farewell, Joshua. You've done your duty and more. Farewell, old friend. See you on the flip side. Go in peace. Woo, boy, that, that man is wrecked. That is one of the more straightforward hauntings that we've <laughs> we've dealt with. I'm good for nothing after that. Oh, come on. Thanks Andrew. for your help. I'll not forget it. Good for nothing. Did you not hear Joshua? Did you not listen? I don't want to talk. Very well. All right. Well, hopefully he will learn to accept and forgive himself. Okay, so next. Still have to figure out how to get over here. But we need to do this first. Uh, we also have this. 
So if we get to the top, well, we have to get up there to go here anyway. So that'll be that'll be next episode. I set a waypoint for myself just so I don't forget. But uh, that'll be next episode. Well, we helped a soldier. Um, hopefully he'll learn to deal with his guilt. He'll forgive himself, especially since he uh, was uh, granted forgiveness by his friend. So, um, yeah, I hope Andrew White will, will end up okay in the end. Next episode, we're going to head up into the mines. Hope you'll join me. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>